Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratches. Today we're going to be looking at a rather obscure game engine. It is called the Rav Engine. Mostly this is an individual's project. It is an interesting open source C++ 23 based look at uh, doing an entity based game engine. So if you ever wanted to jump into the source code of someone else's work or maybe build upon it, Rav Engine may be an interesting one for you. What you're seeing in front of you, this is one of the many demos that come from Rav Engine. And I hope you like demos because quite frankly, that is going to be your primary way of learning. We're going to see more and more balls drop as this runs. Now, interestingly enough, the frame rate never seems to actually change. You can see the frame rate in the top left corner. It's a little sporadic, but it started at like 130 to 90 frames per second, and it's maintaining at like that level as well. So we keep jumping up in frames. I don't know what's going on there. But uh, yeah, this is one of the examples that you will find in Ravengine. Let's jump in and learn a little bit more. So as I mentioned earlier on, this is a C++23 uh based game engine. It's the 3D game engine for modern devices, a number of platforms supported. There is no editor in this case, so technically we should probably call this one a framework, although there are some uh, code in there for working with something like Blender, loading Blender files in, so you could use that as your level editor. As you can see here, it is under the Apache 2.0 source license, so it is uh, pretty good in that regard, like in terms of what you're able to do with it, and as you can see, it is being continuously updated as well. So it's a project that has been going on for a number of years now. In terms of the features and functionality of the RAV engine. Again, C++ a 23 cross-platform game engine, fast parallel ECS or entity component system with support for querying by base class, uh, multi-threaded physics simulation, 3D spatial audio, including room rever rever reverberation modeling, automatic memory management handled via reference counting, no garbage collection, GPU rendered engine with modern rendering APIs, including Metal, DirectX 12, and Vulkan. That Metal should also give you an indication of the platforms that are supported here. Uh, full programmable GPU particle system, including both arbitrary meshes and billboarded sprites, physically based lighting model, author shaders in vanilla GLSL shader language, declarative user interface system based on HTML and CSS, support for SVGs in the UI and for textures, built-in multiplayer networking system, finite state machine, animation blending, tree system, compute shader skinning, um, mesh skinning with automatic batching, programmable audio effect processing system, uh, AR VR support via open XR integration and then continuous improvement, uh, friendly build process powered by CMake, quality of life features like automatic incremental shader compilation and integrates with GPU debugging tools such as the Xcode metal debugger, render doc, PIX, Ensight, and so on. It uses a number of different third-party tools. You could see in the dependencies total, so you can see here the various different pieces that this is dependent on. So it does build on top of other programs out there. Again, there is no editor and this is an early alpha, so this should be looked at as a learning project pretty much only. On top of that, you can see here the platforms that are supported are pretty comprehensive. So Mac OS, iOS, TV OS, Vision OS, Windows 10, Linux, Android, and then web assembly early on there. Um, in terms of the functionality and features you need, there are a couple dependencies you're going to need to install. But the thing that you're going to really want to know about is this. These are your samples. There are a ton of samples available in this project. Another thing that is very important and where you probably want to start with this engine is going to be here, go to the home repository and then go to Hello Cube. Now this is your minimalist project using it. It will pull in all the engine functionalities you need as well. Do be sure when you uh, check it out that you do recurse of the sub modules so you get all of the other dependencies. It's actually quite large when you are done. Uh, and we're going to take a look at what that looks like right now. So this is Hello Cube. This is the, um, the demo code, uh, incredibly commented in terms of what you need to do. Let's just go ahead and we'll run Hello Cube so you get an idea of what Hello Cube actually does. Uh, and I think it's going to be pretty predictable uh, in that it's going to create a cube. There you go. So that is the end result of Hello Cube. Now let's go about seeing how Rav Engine actually accomplishes this. Because again, uh, it does have a uh, different approach to things. It is ECS based. So you can see your app inherits from Rav Engine app. You do various callbacks so on startup. Uh, we've got uh, an error message dialoguing right there. Here is uh, your level or your world uh, is inherited from Rav Engine world on your constructor. So you see you're instantiating a game object, uh, mesh collection static. So you're getting a mesh called cube. This is a, um, I think it's an OBJ file in the subdirectory available for you. So this is how you go about loading meshes. Uh, pretty straightforward. Here you are creating a material for it by creating a new PBR material instance. Uh, you are emplacing a component inside of the cube entity, which is a static mesh. 
Uh, you create a camera entity by instantiating a game object, creating the camera entity, again, placing a component inside of it. Uh, and then you're creating some lights in the world, get transformed. And then here you can see this is the ECS. This is the S part or the systems. These are the things that do stuff in a ECS world. This is a callback that's basically going to um, spin the cube uh, every frame. So here you can see each frame, it updates it a little bit, updates the FPS and rotates it by a certain amount. And then we add the uh, system into the world. So you're noticing this in place, in place component, in place uh, system. So that's your ECS part of things. And we also, I believe, had an in place of an entity. So it's very straightforward uh, how, uh, oh no, I guess you instantiate entities, you in place components and you in place uh, systems. So that's how all these things work together. And then you hear basically starting up, create a window, give it a title, uh, create your world like so, and add a world to your uh, current level like this and start your app. So that is your minimalistic hello world style approach and gives you an idea of how the coding works in Rev Engine. Now, again, there's not a lot of documentation available. There is actually, so he's done a bit of a blog that walks through the various different pieces of things as he built them. So if you want to learn more about his ECS system, he's got walkthroughs, breakdowns of that. But the better the extent of the information is this dev blog that he has done over here. And then the other thing that you're going to want to jump into is this. So this is your comprehensive list of samples. We saw one of the samples early on. Uh, that was the rigid body sample right here. Uh, this is a separate project that you clone and create. So let's go ahead. We'll open up the source file here. So you get an idea. Again, level is your world or, you know, your level within the world if you have multiple. Here you can see the world for that um, with the cube and the spawners and all the physics and such in place. You get an idea of what a more complicated example looks like. So this is the constructor for your world where you're creating all the various different things. Uh, you're setting up dependencies again. So this is all about that ECS setup. So it could be an interesting um code base to jump into. Would should you create your game using this one? Unless this is very specifically what you're looking for, probably not. Uh, if you are writing your own game engine, is there something you could learn from this code? Most likely. Uh, there's some interesting decisions here. It's very robust in terms of what it does. And you see here, we got a number of different examples here. There is going to be an air hockey sample game, but this one just seems to crash after the UI. Uh, but we've got a number of examples here, lighting, uh, scene navigation around the world. Let's go check that one out really quickly, get an idea of what another one of these examples look like. So I have built all the examples. Here we go. So uh, this is network um, na navigation in a scene. So click over here, you're going to see minimum path as you go through the scene. And here you see uh, a bit of a, a glitch. I've seen that happen in the past. For some reason, the world stops rendering. So again, you have to be willing to jump into the source code to really figure out how these things work. And that one there, for example, is the navigation demo. So if you want to jump in, source code is available here, single source file. So it's pretty easy to learn from. But as you can see from the code, if this does not appeal to you, you are not going to like to work with this particular engine. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is the RAV engine. It is available uh, on GitHub. I will have all the relevant links in the linked article down below. It did start off as C++20, but it looks like over time, he's just kept it up to date. So the engine code is all available over here in RAV engine. Chances are you're probably not gonna wanna start there though. What you're gonna do is start with either the samples or the hello cube and then it will bring in all of the dependencies, everything else that it needs to work with. Of course, you are going to need to use CMake, and that is uh, an experience for some people. But it does all compile. I got it all up and running, both on Windows and Mac. Uh, I haven't tried it on Linux, so if you guys do try it out on Linux, uh, let me know uh, what your experience was. And if you do like what he's done here, do go ahead and uh, come on in here, give him uh, a star. Uh, people seem to love stars, so that's... Uh, that's where we're going with this one. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Rav Engine, something a little bit different, but if you were looking for an open source C++ game engine, or more technically a framework, uh, that is exactly what Rav Engine provides. Been under development for a number of years, mostly a hobbyist project, but again, all available under the Apache 2.0 license. And if you're into that whole entity-based approach, could be a good learning opportunity. So let me know what you think of Rav Engine. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.